West Ham have won five major trophies in their history, and two of these were won by a man named John Lyle. Overall, Lyle spent 34 years at Upton Park in various capacities, the tail end of which was a 15-year managerial spell that saw him lead the Hammers to two FA Cups. This is a story of John Lyle, a West Ham legend. John Lyle was born in Ilford, East London, on the 24th of February, 1940. As a child, he was spotted by West Ham manager Ted Fenton and Chief Scout Wally St. Pierre, and was given a spot in the club's academy. He would soon take on another role as a ground staff boy, helping to clean the senior players' boots and paint the stands at Upton Park. He graduated from the academy and made his debut in 1959. Sadly, his playing career would be brief, as he suffered a severe injury to his left knee and he was forced to retire in 1964, having made 36 appearances for the club. A testimonial took place to Lyle, which raised him nearly £4,000, but as a man of a family, his financial situation looked perilous. Lyle, desperate to remain in football, took up coaching, spending five afternoons a week coaching the children at Stepney School, and also worked part-time in the financial department of Upton Park. Under Ron Greenwood, West Ham experienced great success in the 1960s, winning the FA Cup in 1964 and the European Cup Winners' Cup the next year. Ron Greenwood soon gave Lyle the role of youth team coach, a prestigious role considering the likes of Jeff Hurst and Bobby Moore were recent graduates of the academy. Lyle would rise to the coaching ranks and eventually became assistant to Greenwood. After a stagnant couple of years, Greenwood moved upstairs to become general manager, and John Lyle would step up and take over his role. Since their victory in the Cup Winners' Cup, West Ham had been a side many had felt underachieved, and that with the quality of players they had, they should have won more honours. Many were unsure if a rookie manager would be the man to take them to further glory, but they were soon proven wrong. Greenwood would be in charge of recruitment, but Lyle would take charge of managing the players and ensuring he got the best out of them. The likes of Keith Robson, Billy Jennings and Alan Taylor arrived in the summer of 74. Although the season started poorly for the Hammers, they soon picked up form. They ultimately finished in 13th place and would be getting on the tube for a grand day out. Victories over Southampton, Swindon Town, QPR, Arsenal and Ipswich saw West Ham to the FA Cup final. At Wembley, they would have a bittersweet reunion as their opponents Fulham were captained by Bobby Moore. In the 60th minute, a shot from Billy Jennings was parried out to Alan Taylor, who slotted it in for the goalkeeper's legs to give West Ham the lead. Four minutes later, Taylor slotted it in from a rebound again to double the Hammers' advantage. West Ham held on and had won the FA Cup for the second time. Billy Bonds climbed the steps to lift the famous trophy, a remarkable conclusion to Lyle's first season. The next season was one of misfortune, however, as the club only won one of their last 22 league games to finish six points ahead of the relegation zone. There was chance of redemption as they reached the final of the European Cup Winners' Cup, but were unable to win it for a second time as Anderlecht emerged 4-2 winners. The club finished in 17th place the next season, losing only one of their last 13 matches, and defeating Manchester United 4-2 on the final day to survive relegation. Ron Greenwood left his role in 1977 to become England manager, and now Lyle was in charge of recruitment too. Sadly though, in 1978, West Ham were relegated to the second division. It was unthinkable when West Ham had won the FA Cup in Lyle's first season, but the board remained loyal to him in the hope that they would bounce back. They had a promising 5th place finish in their first campaign, and finished 7th the next season, but were back at Wembley again. West Ham defeated West Brom, Leighton Orient, Swansea, Aston Villa and Everton to reach a second FA Cup final in 5 years. They would face the holders Arsenal, and naturally went in as the underdogs. Lyle deployed a 4-5-1 to null the creativity in Brian Talbot and Liam Brady. It worked like a charm. In the 13th minute, there was a scramble around the goal mouth, before Stuart Pearson blasted the ball across the six-yard box. On the end of it was the head of Trevor Brooking, and the ball found its way in. West Ham held on to their lead, and completed the remarkable feat of winning the FA Cup despite being outside the top flight. To date, no club has repeated this achievement. West Ham were welcomed home as heroes, and keeping Lyle despite the relegation had proved a masterstroke. Keen to push on and seal promotion to the top flight, they signed Paul Goddard from QPR, who would form a lethal partnership with David Cross. 
The strike partnership scored a combined 39 league goals, as West Ham soared to first place in the second division, winning it 13 points ahead of second place Notts County. They were also at Wembley again for the League Cup final, but were defeated 2-1 by Bob Paisley to Liverpool in a replay. They also reached the quarter-finals of the Cup Winners' Cup, defeating Real Madrid's reserve side along the way, before being knocked out by eventual winners Dynamo Tipicilli. Lyle had masterminded another brilliant season, and West Ham were back in the first division. West Ham returned stronger, finishing in ninth place, and would remain in the top flight for a lengthy period. Lyle became admired at the club, seen by many as a father figure, and was involved with the players in every aspect, taking training, negotiating salaries, and hunting for new stars. In a discussion with Tony Cotty over a pay rise, when the player said he'd have to discuss the offer with his father first, Lyle slammed the phone on the table and said to Cotty, There, call your dad. The early 1980s saw club stalwarts Frank Lampard Sr. and Trevor Brooking depart the club, so Lyle had to rebuild. However, they still experienced a series of top-half finishes, and in 1986, West Ham finished third, their best-ever top-flight finish to date. However, the relationship between Lyle and West Ham had started to become strained. In 1984, QPR had made an offer of the manager's role to Lyle, which he accepted. Despite West Ham giving Lyle permission to speak to the hoops, they said that due to him still having one year on his contract, they wanted £150,000 in compensation. QPR were dismayed by this, and Lyle felt uncomfortable and hence withdrew his acceptance. Lyle's last two years were unsuccessful, with the departures of Tony Cotty and Paul Goddard serving a bitter blow. A number of lower half finishes were capped off with relegation in 1989. Lyle would not be given the opportunity to take West Ham up again. In the summer of 1989, he was summoned to the West Ham boardroom, and was informed his contract would not be renewed. Despite being awarded an ex gratia payment of £100,000, he left the club in bitter circumstances, with West Ham only giving a 73-word acknowledgement of his 34-year service to the club in their next match day programme. Many fans and players were upset he was not given the opportunity to take them back up. He returned to football the next year, initially serving as an advisor to Terry Venables at Ipswich, before taking over the manager's role himself. In 1992, he won the second division with the club, and managed to survive relegation over the next two seasons. However, with the club bottom in December 1994, John Lyle resigned from his position, and would never manage again. He retired to the farm he had bought in Suffolk. John Lyle died on the 18th of April 2006, at the age of 66 after suffering a heart attack. In the first game after his passing, West Ham played Middlesbrough in the semi-finals of the FA Cup. A minute's silence was held in honour of Lyle, but only seconds in, West Ham fans started singing John Lyle's Claret and Blue Army to honour the club legend. West Ham won 1-0 to reach their first FA Cup final since Lyle was in charge. In 2009, the gates outside Upton Park were renamed the Lyle Gates. John Lyle remains one of the most important figures in the history of West Ham. He served them in nearly every capacity possible, from painting the stands, to playing on the pitch, to managing them in the dugouts. It is only recently that West Ham have won their first major trophy since Lyle was in charge, ending a 33-year drought, which is almost as long as Lyle was employed by West Ham. He worked wonders at Upton Park, taking the Hammers to some of their greatest moments, and under John Lyle, the dreams of West Ham fans certainly did not fade and die.